Hi, this is Kenzo. Welcome back to Love Life Drawing. To continue our hatching series, we're going to look at colourful hatching with pastel. We're also going to see how you can learn from your favourite artists. Now, Mako loves to use bold and colourful hatching in her figure drawing. She's also a fan of the artist Degas, who liked to use figures powerfully with pastel. So studying Degas is a perfect opportunity for her to develop her skills and understanding. Here she's copying one of Degas pastel works so that she can learn about how he hatched with pastel and then later she's going to apply the lessons she learns to help her do this portrait. We don't have any special technology to disentangle the layers and the exact process he used so she's just looking at the final product doing her best to reproduce what he did and seeing what lessons his work can teach us. So first she drew the rough shape of the figure and made a kind of tonal map with charcoal. This charcoal is just a foundation, it's going to get covered up by layers of pastel. To regain these lines, which help with the structure, she'll come back with charcoal again later towards the end. Now after the charcoal she started with burnt umber. Different brands make varying colours with the same names, especially with pastel because of the ratios of the pigments, they vary sometimes. So instead of using the official names, we're just going to show the colour and kind of describe it. So after that she put down some dark brown and she started to find similar greens, or she tried to find similar greens to the one that Degar used, but she actually didn't have any. So she used what she had and she'd note what effect that had on the drawing. The basic method that she's using here is to apply dark and cool colours first, usually used for areas of shade, and then move on to the warmer colours. And the reason for that is that cooler colours and darker colours tend to draw the viewer's eye into the drawing, while warmer and lighter colours come out of the drawing. So when it's possible, it's useful to put down those darker and cooler colours that create depth in the drawing first, and then layer the warmer and lighter ones that come forward on top. And she can do this with pastel because it's so opaque and it has such strong covering power. Something like watercolour, for example, tends to be more transparent, so adding warmer layers on top of cooler ones wouldn't work in the same way. When colours start to look patchy, she applied skin tone lightly across a large area to unify that whole area. Some of the lessons from Degas she realised consciously in her mind, but so many of the lessons are subconscious, learned in her eyes and arm through the action of drawing, intangible insights that she wouldn't be able to put into words and write down. Degas famous for his spirit of experimentation. He used all sorts of techniques, some were traditional and others his own invention. He even used pastels on top of oil paint sometimes. For his pastel work, he used fixative and steam so that he could apply more and more layers of colour. If you aren't using these techniques, you may not be able to add as many layers of pastel. At some point the layers won't adhere properly to the paper. Pastel is mostly pigment powder, it doesn't have as much binder as something like wax crayons for example. If you're using rougher paper like Ingress paper which she's using here, it'll take more layers than if you were using something like cartridge paper. Another thing she learned was that Degas applied colourful hatching very boldly and freely. He used both parallel and contour hatching to achieve both a sense of form and volume and retain some overall consistency across the drawing. She then chose a picture of a head from Crocky Cafe to practice the skills she'd picked up from Degas. She used exactly the same pastel colours. One difference was that she used a thinner stick of charcoal since she was doing facial features now. Again she started with charcoal for the overall shape and tonal shapes of the head. At this stage she already noticed that the drawing didn't look like the head in the photo. So achieving a likeness wasn't her primary concern here, but it was a sign that something was wrong with the proportions. 
So she aligned the position of the outer corner of the left eye and the chin, and she realized that the chin area needed to be altered. You have a look at our measurements video in our Life Drawing Beginner series to understand more about the alignment technique. She also noticed that the drawing lacked the nice roundness of the face, so she tried to add that with the color layers. Now measurements are great, but one of the best indicators that something is wrong with your proportions is when you get that feeling looking at the drawing and something just feels a bit off. You should trust that instinct. As with the Degas exercise, she put the dark and the cool colors first and added the layers of warmer, lighter colors afterwards. Choosing colors isn't always easy, but it was made much simpler here since she was just using the same ones as for the Degas exercise. As we've talked about before, learning drawing is not just about information and knowledge. Your eyes and arm need to understand the information too, and they don't speak English, they only understand hard work. So copying his work gave her eyes and arm what they needed to really understand his techniques. Copying your favorite artist is a very powerful exercise for rapid improvement. Now, obviously you should never pass off other artists' work as your own, but it's fine to copy them for the sake of practice and understanding. When you're choosing an artist to copy, go with your own preferences. You don't need to choose some old master just because everyone says they're great. Unless that's the work you love, you should choose to copy the work that appeals to you. The beauty of pastel hatching is that you can create a mesh of different colors that work together where all the colors are kept alive. You can see the underlying color through the layers of hatching on top of it. If you look closely, you can see each color. They're not blended or mixed with the others, but you can see each color in its original glory and that mesh of interlocking colors working together makes pastel hatching wonderful to look at. Okay, we really hope you enjoyed watching how this beautiful portrait came into being with the help of a Degas drawing. Stay tuned for our next hatching video where we'll talk over the mechanics of hatching technique. And if you're looking for an exercise, one of the very best is to copy your favorite artist. So consider it for your next drawing session. Don't forget to subscribe because we'll be posting every week and please let YouTube know that this is a good video by hitting the like button and leave us some feedback in the comments. That's really useful. Thank you so much for watching.